Good morning. Hello. Happy Tuesday. How are you guys? Good morning. Welcome. We're so glad that you are joining in with us for the prophetic word of the day. Um, if Hope you this get your is coffee. Your, yes, have your coffee. If this is your first time joining on with us, I'm Davy Brooks. This is my husband, Chris Brooks, and we are so glad that you have decided to spend your morning with us. If you want more information about us and our ministry and how God is using us to impact the globe, please go to our website, chrisbrooksministries.com. Lots of our information is there, um, as well as follow us on all of our social media platforms. Get notified on this page, Google, morning, morning, so morning. that way you can get notified to see um, all the posts that we're making, all the lives that we're doing. Um, also, all the lives that we're doing? Lives. Oh, lives. I thought you said all the lives. I didn't understand what you said. Lives. All the lives. All the Facebook lives. As well as uh, subscribe on our YouTube channel because we post a lot of stuff there as well. And there's also messages on YouTube um, from services that we've been at that are not here on Facebook. So go check those out too. All right. So what we need you to do is share and tag and get this out there so that we can uh, try to overcome shadow banning. Um, because we have been shadow banned numerous times. Multiple times. It's multiple crazy. times. And so we need you to share, tag, get this out there right now. Mm -hmm. um, the more you talk over here and the more you heart over here, the more that it boosts the algorithm. So make sure that you do that for us. Amen. Um, that morning, being everybody. said, good morning. I hope you're ready for the PWOD. If you are, tell me over here. So I'm ready for the PWOD hey, this morning. I'm ready to receive the prophetic word of the day. While you're doing that, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8, 1 through 13. In the e, I've been, I'm going to be in the ESV, whatever version you have this morning. But 1 Corinthians 8, 1 through 13. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to go a little by little through this instead of reading the whole thing and then turning around and going back to it. So we're going to just dissect the scripture, line upon line, precept upon precept. So let's go ahead and pray. Father, we love you. We yes. thank you so much for your word. May your word come forth with power, anointing, and authority. May it change our lives, Lord God, to where we grab hold of this information and we become more like you and less like us in Jesus' yes. name. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 through 13. Title today is Made My Brother Stumble. Mm. Let's see why. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, concerning food <coughs> offered to idols... We know that all of us possess knowledge, and this knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. So let's stop right here. So we have knowledge. This knowledge that we have about food and idols, because he's talking about food and idols right here, puffs up. Puffs up means to inflate with anger or conceit. Okay? To inflate with anger or be conceited, conceit, whatever. Love builds up. Yeah. So we don't want to do anything that tears down, and we don't want to walk in a knowledge of self, which we're going to get into. We always want to build up in the love of God. Verse 2, if anyone imagines that he has something, he does not yet know as he ought to know, but if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Mm -hmm. If anyone imagines, these are thoughts that are produced by self-knowledge. This is me thinking on my own thoughts, not the thoughts of God, not reading the word and gaining the knowledge of the word. The word says, those that do this do not yet know okay. as he ought to know. Mm -hmm. So knowledge is actually liberating Okay. because the more you know, the better you are. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, a while ago, fire already. Hallelujah. Knowledge, though, is also dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know just enough Bible, but not enough in a good way, mm -hmm. to where you become dangerous in your theology and your doctrine yes. because you do not have the full knowledge of God. You have some of man's theological knowledge, mm -hmm. doctrinal knowledge uh, based upon... Um, a certain um, criteria of ministry, whether that be in a Assembly of God, Church of God, Prophecy, mm -hmm. UP, whatever, Bi uh, Baptist, Methodist, okay? And, and don't get this the wrong way, but sometimes we can be so knowledgeable in self and man mm -hmm. 
to where we're so smart, we have actually become dumb. Because we do not walk in a spirit knowledge, uh, nor do we walk in knowing, as God said, to know. For anyone who imagines, and, and the, the key here, in the middle of this whole you know, thing about food, is that your knowledge must be godly time, knowledge. Yeah. Your knowledge must be godly knowledge mm -hmm. and not producing wild imaginations. For wild imaginations here is knowing that you think you know something, but you do not yet know as you ought to know. Mm -hmm. Y'all getting this? Yeah. You think you know based upon your own self-knowledge and imaginations mm -hmm. when he does not know as he ought to know. Mm -hmm. That's why we're always working and processing to get closer to the knowledge of God so that we do not misrepresent mm -hmm. true knowledge and word. Okay, verse four. All right, boost it, guys, boost it. It jumped up to 30 and all of a sudden it cut off. And I'm telling you, this happens all the time. Mm -hmm. We'll watch the numbers shoot up and then all of a sudden they cut back and we're like, what just happened? And it's not even necessarily that they're accurate because there there will be sometimes more shares. Well, I'm just bringing it up because this is what's happening. We'll, we'll have way more shares than even that we'll see the people that are on here. So we know that there is a censorship and there is a shadow banning that is taking place. Conservative Christian voices mm. are being shut down and, and shut down. And I just want to say this, that if there is anybody that is watching this word right now, on a reason to be critical or to shut this voice down, and you're the one that is reporting this or doing something, we just cover May that. May the Lord rebuke you. We just cover that with the blood of Jesus right now. Huh? May just, the Lord rebuke you. Yes. There you go. I'm not going to do it. May the Lord do it. Number Amen. four, or, or verse four. Therefore, as the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence mm -hmm. and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on mm -hmm. earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all are, excuse me, whom are all things and to whom exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. Okay. However, verse 7, not all possess this knowledge. Mm-hmm. Seasoned believers possess a knowledge different than new converts. Yes. Those being discipled don't know, but those that are seasoned, you should know. So this isn't just about, per se, food, even though this is in the food category that we're talking about here, about what to eat, what not to eat, what to drink, what not to drink in front of converts, but he says oh, your conversation and your actions are the guide to those that are following you. What you do in moderation, those following you are going to do in excess. So if you do things in moderation, those following you are going to do it in excess, whether good or bad. I, I, I want to say this real quick, that you are leading people whether you want to be a leader or not. You're mm -hmm. either pointing them to Jesus or away from Jesus. Bottom line. So you can say all day long, you know, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a Sunday school teacher. I'm not any of these things. So it really doesn't matter. It does matter because you are a witness as a Christian to the kingdom of God. And so you, you we've got to check ourselves and say, okay, God, I want to be a vessel clean before you. You know, the, the scripture, I know that you're not getting into this, but I feel like I need to say this right now. The scripture says that who can ascend the hill of the Lord except for those with clean hands and a pure heart? We have got to have clean hands and a pure heart when we are around the body of Christ, mm -hmm. because if we don't, we're going to make them stumble. Okay, absolutely. So let's continue on with verse 7. I don't know where you're going, but keep going. But, this is so some, but some through former association mm -hmm. with idols. Now look what he's mm -hmm. talking about here. Those that came out of darkness, mm -hmm. which was all of us. Yeah. They associated with things that were not godly. Mm -hmm. They ate food as really offered to an idol. Mm -hmm. And their conscience, being weak, is defiled. 
For food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. So watch this. To a seasoned individual, if we eat food, mm -hmm. and this is what you're saying, if we eat something that is, Sorry, the somebody said, well, they cooked that. it and offered it to an idol. I can't believe you were in there and you ate that. I don't believe in their idol. Mm -hmm. So this is going into the, I don't believe in their idol. All right. But what if there is a new convert or a new disciple, new believer, and they don't know any better and they see you do it, mm -hmm. but now it twists them hey, to where they are now looking at, well, look at what you're doing, and if you can do it, I can do it. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Our example is so important. There's so many of you that are just now jumping back on <laughs> because the numbers have increased quite a bit. Do us a favor. Share this. Tag this. Inbox this all over the place. This is a truth that the body of Christ has got to grasp because we are all witnesses for his kingdom. All right. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. But take care that this right of yours, means that you got the right to go do this, does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. Yes. It's not just about your food, hey, Heather. but it's also about your conversation and everything. Oh, completely. It's Anything right. that you do, watch this, that is a stumbling block to your brother. He said, just because yes. you have the liberty and the knowledge hey, of he, doing this thing and it, 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 it and it doesn't affect you in this manner, then mm -hmm. you should not be doing that in a manner to where in front of new converts, young believers, to where it is destroying them. Well, even seasoned people. I mean, we've or just... Or even seasoned. The, the, here's the bottom line. We have to watch our well, witness get, no matter where we it. are. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to get into it. I'm okay. Gonna get, I'm going to get into it. I promise. I'm going to get into it. Watch this. Okay. Chris is about to talk about some specifics that you're going to want. Oh, I'm going into my own personal walk, and I'm going to show you. Share verse, this. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple... Will he not be encouraged? If his conscience is weak to mm -hmm. eat food offended to idols, and so by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed. This is because you go, oh, and, and here's what I've heard people say. Well, hey, just because you're weak in your faith doesn't mean that I'm weak in my faith, and I'm going to do this, and if you can't handle it, then you need to get stronger in your faith. How, uh, how I arrogant! Punch somebody in the face when I hear him say that. How arrogant is that? Because you pause mm, just for a second. Because what you're really saying is that the people of Christ don't matter to well, you. Well, watch what the verse eleven says. By your knowledge, mm -hmm. your ignorance, this weak person is destroyed, and the brother from who Christ died. Mm -hmm. So thus, you sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it's weak. You have sinned against Christ. Sinned against the Lord, all because of your arrogance. All because of your arrogance and your uh, liberty to go out and do things that you think is no big deal. And that all the weak-minded believers out there that are, whoa, what is going or on here? Or make a post. Or make a post, show your pictures. Okay. Therefore, verse 13, if food makes your brother stumble, I'll never eat meat lest I make my brother stumble. Now, Paul's saying, I'm not going to eat meat in front of them, but I'll eat meat behind the door. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because I don't want to do anything to make them stumble. I'm going to give you three examples here. Three examples um, of things that happened in my life. I'm a, Okay. Example number one. And the reason why that this is relevant is because this is our story. This is our it's testimony. It's our story. Well, it's mine. Yes. But well, you're with me, so it's I, It's mine, too, because I'm with you. All so right. it affects so me. So we were brand new believers. And we went to a grocery store and we're going into the grocery store to buy stuff. And I see one of the deacons of the church coming out of the grocery store and he's pushing a buggy. And I said, hey, there's deacon so-and-so. Um, and I go up to him and as the closer I get, I see what's in his buggy. And it's full of liquor. I mean full of beer, liquor, all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this dude's fixing to get liquored up. He's about to throw it down. <laughs> and he tells me, he says, Chris, I am a owner of a car dealership and we're throwing a party. It was a Christmas party. A Christmas party. Mm -hmm. And we do this to provide for those that drink and blah, 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 blah. And come to find out he was engaging in it. So what does Chris do? As a new believer, a new convert, Chris is gone for five days. 
left his wife for five days on a drunken binge because I'm like, well, if that guy can do it, then I can do it. But it took me to an extreme place mm -hmm. to where I even left home. Y'all, and this was before cell phones. Uh, I, I think there might have been a pager, but he didn't have that. So th there was no way. No, we, I had a cell phone, but I just didn't have it on. I don't think, I, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I had that little flip phone thing. Oh, did you? Yeah, <laughs> but, remember. but. But there was no way of finding me. There was no way of finding me because yeah. I ran off. He was Because I lost my mind mm -hmm. because somebody else is just thought that it was okay, but to me became a stumbling block, all right? Mm -hmm. Later on, about a year later, I'm still growing in the faith. I meet a man that's a businessman. We sit down and begin to talk, and then he begins to share with me his opinion of prospering in the ministry or prospering, period, in, through, business. in business, and then begins to tell me how... Um, tithing is not biblical anymore and how he doesn't tithe and how he only, he only gives money when he hears the Holy Ghost and stuff but he does not tithe off of his income and what ends up happening is it ends up just destroying me mm -hmm. in that moment because I'm like well why am I tithing why am I giving my money and me and Davey are then fighting about it and then I go to the church to talk to one of the pastors and one of the pastors I talk to I'm like look something's not right here and and of course he thank God we had some great pastors that led us rightly that led us rightly and said look this isn't that this guy's is, kooky this is wrong this guy's going down a kooky path and leading people astray well what he did was he took scripture and twisted it and thank God that we had enough leadership and enough wisdom to search the scripture for ourselves as well as to being taught. Now let's speed up mm -hmm. years in the ministry. And I arrived at a church here in Tennessee. And I go out on the golf course with them because they all play golf. And that first day out there while I'm on the golf course, I'm watching them drink, smoke cigars, and cuss. It was horrible. And I'm like, what am I getting myself? What is going on here? Then they begin to tell me what words I can say and what words I can't say. The words I can say and get away with and the words I can't say that'll get me fired, that it's okay for us all to drink socially and have a cigar every now and then as men. Guys, it wounded me. It wounded me. Extremely. To where I am pastoring students and adults, but I've got a lifestyle of, well, we can cuss, uh, we can drink, smoke a cigar every now and then if we want to, because if we don't look normal, and we try to look holier than thou, nobody will want to come to the church. So we've got to compromise a little here so that people will see that we are down to earth. Which is absolutely contrary to the Word of God. The Word of you God. You want to talk about bringing confusion? The Word of God communicates be ye separate. It also communicates that you are to be holy as He is holy, to have clean hands and a pure heart. I mean, there's. Oh, don't even get me started on these on these things. I didn't know that you were actually going to open these wonderful cans of worms today. There you go. <laughs> but this was also one of the reasons that I come close to committing suicide. Yeah. While at a church mm -hmm. on staff. Chris communicates about all this in his book, Restoring True Identity. So when I yeah. left, then I finally got free mm -hmm. from all the mess. But watch this. When you sin in this manner... And it leads somebody astray based on your own personal knowledge that you walk in. You are sinning against Christ when you do this. Yeah. And you're destroying brothers and sisters based upon your own thinking, knowledge, conversation without the Lord being the one that guides your voice yeah. guides your words. I love what Gwen said, dabbling with demons. Well, yeah, somebody said don't follow the world. 
Amen. Now, you're right. Don't follow the world. When the world, hold on, is in the leadership of the church. That's, this, and the leadership of the church is leading the church and calling it okay. You want to talk about confusion? But that's what that's the world about, that we live you in right now. You want to talk about destruction? Yeah. Look at it today. That's why the church is in the mess it's There in. are people right now that are, uh, the church is coming right out. LGBTQ is fine. We can marry them. We can do all that. It's not sin. It's Inclusion's love. It's okay. inclusion. Uh, little by little, mm -hmm. the church is throwing in a towel. Yeah. And allowing worldly things and that knowledge to come over. And here's why. Mm -hmm. To boost their attendance. Yeah. More than are you prepared for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So folks, this, this word right here made my brother stumble. Have you? Or have you stumbled because of somebody else? Now watch this. Does that mean I'm weak? Um, no. Yeah, well, the Bible says they are weaker in that manner. Just means you have some room to grow. Because lo and behold, any person that does this, if our relationship is close with Jesus, we wouldn't do it. Right. Now, even if it's your leadership, mm -hmm. and the leadership starts doing it, when it first when it first happened, I should have turned and ran. Yeah. I should have said, nope, this was the wrong idea. This was bad. Nope, I'm out. But what I did was I tried to just make it happen. Okay. So you've got to recognize when this is going on and make the right choices for you and your family. Do not compromise. It because not if you it. don't, you could be stuck for years yes. trying to get out of something that you never meant to get into. Yes. Now, if you have done this to a brother, you better repent. And, and you know what? Sometimes people unknowingly create stumbling blocks. I mean... You know, we're, we're imperfect. We live in an imperfect world. But once we realize that or if someone brings something to our attention, we're like, oh my gosh, if somebody I'm so bring, sorry. Somebody brings it to our attention and says, you know what, I just don't, that hurts me, I don't do it. I say, well, we're not doing it. Then I'll never do that again. Not doing it. Nope. I'm so sorry. Forgive and me. If, and if my liberalism, mm -hmm. hello church. Come on. My liberalism in the church is starting to lead people astray that I need to check my relationship with God on whether or not yes. I'm doing this for the Lord or if I'm just doing it on my own. Yeah, come on. I mean, okay. we, we want to be clean and pure before the Father. So let me, let me throw this out there. If this has happened to you, we're going to renounce it right now. Yes. Or if you have done this. Yes. Both, we're going to renounce it and we're going to get rid of it right now. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. if we have in any way, yes. through our own liberal knowledge, hurt people, led them astray, whether knowingly or unknowingly, we repent right here, right now, in Jesus' name. Yes. Now, Lord, for those of us that fail to the stumbling block, we repent, and Lord, we learn to gain the wisdom and knowledge of Holy Spirit yes. to not do it again and not allow ourselves to be pulled into a snare of the enemy. Yes. So right here, right now, God, we renounce the two things yes. and we declare that the mind of Christ come, the Spirit of God rest Amen. upon us, and for us to walk and live according to your principles. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Wow. Hallelujah. If this word was for you, please let us know. You can write it in the comments or you can inbox us. We want to be praying with you and mixing our faith with you. Um, I think that this is a, and again, I'm so thankful for what it is that God's called us to do. To hear from the Lord on a daily basis. Amen. To bring discipleship to bring instruction and truth. Um, we love platform ministry. We love big conferences. We love all of that. We go to those things. We're a part of those things. We preach at those events. 
Um, but there's something so significant and so sweet and rich about these teachings mm -hmm. because it is teaching you, the viewer, um, whether you're watching live or, or watching replays, it's teaching you, the viewer, how to be that reflection of Jesus to a lost world. Um, and it's so important. Our world is in desperate need of Jesus. There is no other answer. There is no mm. other solution right now. The, the, the news, it's, it's, it's bananas. The, the social media posts, the, the, the falling away of the men and women of God who have, have attached themselves to a liberal theology um, or even the, the complete flip side. They have gone to extreme critical flip side um, and, and they're just out demon hunting. Mm. <laughs> Neither one of those is sharing the gospel and the truth of Jesus. So we have a world out there right now who is lost, who is in need of deliverance, in need of healing and restoration. Amen. And that's what this teaching is about. And we want for you to join with us and partner with this assignment. Go to our website, chrisbrooksministries.com forward slash partner. Join with us. Ask Holy Spirit what it is that you can give for a one-time donation or whether you can partner monthly with this assignment. We want to join with you to see lives impacted for his truth. Amen. Amen. All right, folks, we love you. We've prayed. Amen. We've declared. We've decreed. Now we're going to walk in victory. Yes. Because you are victorious. Amen. Love you too, Chris Wiley, all of you on there today. Y'all be blessed. Amen. Go check everything out. We will see you tomorrow for another PWOD in Jesus' mighty name. Remember. 830 Central, yeah. 930 <laughs> Eastern. But all if right. it won't challenge you. It won't change you. Love you. See you.